All right, today we're going to graph radical equations. And uh, we've done this just a little bit. We know we should know the, uh, the basic function. And so here is the most simple version. Here's a function, a radical, just a square root of x. And, uh, you know, we already discovered that, I mean, just a real quick sketch here, we know that this looks something like this. But let's not, let's, let's go back, let's go back uh, and review that, just to, like, where that came from in the first place. Let's not forget, I mean, every time I teach graphing, I, I like to remind all students that you can graph anything if you just simply make a chart and then pick values for x. Pick values, whatever you want here. Okay, you can put any values you want here and then plug them into the function over here and whatever y values you get go here. You can make a graph from that every time. It doesn't matter what the function is. Now this one's a little unique in that we, we're not allowed we're not allowed to plug in to here anything that makes negatives inside that square root because that's not in the domain of this function. We're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. So our lowest possible value that we are allowed to plug in for x is 0. And if we're smart about it, we'll, go, we'll, we'll also do 1 and we'll do 4 and we'll even throw in a 9. We want to put in numbers if we're, you know, just just to make it pretty, we want to put in numbers here, 1, 4, 9, so that when we take the square root, we get a perfect square. We get a nice whole number there instead of a decimal. We don't have to do that, but it'll make the graphing a little easier. So, uh, let's do it. So if we put, if we take the uh, square root of 0, we get 0. If we take the square root of 1, we get 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And we could keep going with this. We could keep putting in larger numbers for x, and we get different numbers for y. So when we do this, we create a graph, something like this. Try to, when you're making your graph by hand, try your best to make these look sort of equal spaces. We might not even, we're going to run out of room a little bit here. So, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, right there. Now I'm off. I'm going off my uh, graph. If I do the nine, but it'll be nine three would be, you know, somewhere over here. But we'll uh, we won't graph that one. See where I'm at over there? That's about where nine three would be. Okay, and then just you would connect the dots, and you'd have a graph that sort of looked like this, which is pretty similar to what I, my casual sketch over here. So that's where it's all coming from. We're not memorizing anything. We're not having to. Ma we're not making this up. It just, it just happens when we plot when we create points from this function. The function here turns into those points, and those points turn into this graph. All right. So let's try another one where it's not just the basic square root of x function. I'm going to put. Uh, putting a minus 2 in here this time. Now if we think back to uh, when we were graphing shifts like this, we already know that when we mess with the inside of a function, in this case, you know, a square root function today, that it's going to shift the graph right and left. And when it's minus, it actually goes to the right. But you don't have to memorize that. All we're going to do, just for, we'll do this again here, we're going to make a chart, a t-chart, and this is where it gets a little bit different. This is what's unique about square root functions is we have to think about what's the lowest number that I'm allowed to put in here so that the inside of this radical is not negative. 
because we cannot have negatives inside of a square root for graphing purposes. It's an undefined situation. And with the, just a little bit of thought, you realize that the lowest number you're allowed to put in for x here is 2. And we can put a 3 in there. And maybe we should put a 6 in there. That might be just enough stuff for what we're trying to do. You'll notice that I made the question say, identify the domain and range of this function. Domain and range. Well, we've already, just today a little bit, already been talking about domain. Domain is what your, all the x values that exist for a function, or what you're allowed to plug in for x. And so you can see here, the lowest number I'm allowed to plug in for x is 2. So that has something to do with the domain. And then I can go forever after that. I can go up. I could put in 100, a million, you know, whatever I want there. So the domain, I'll just kind of, I'll write it down here. The domain for this function is 2 is the lowest value. And we are allowed to put a 2 in there, so we're going to make a square bracket, meaning 2 is fine. Include 2 in the domain. And then from there, the highest number is infinity. That's pretty easy. The, uh, the range is a, is a little bit weirder. In fact, we'll save the range. We're going to, let's, go ahead and, let's go back to what we were doing. We're going to plug in these values here, the x's, into this function to get the y values. And so 2 minus 2 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And 6, you notice I put a 6 in there because 6 minus 2 is 4. And the square root of 4 is a nice number. It's 2. Now, let's go back to range. Let's talk about range. So, with the range, it's all the y values that you can get out of this function. And we can kind of see here that the lowest x value we plug in is 2, and it creates the lowest possible y value of 0. There's no way we can get a y value that's negative here. So the range here is the smallest is 0, and it's also going to keep going up higher and higher as we put in higher x values over here. So the range is 0 is the lowest y value. And we can get 0, so we put a square, square bracket. And once again, infinity. And we could, we could also have saved doing domain and range till after we graph this, because we are going to graph this right now, too. And then you'll see the picture of domain and range as well. So here comes a graph. Now I'm going to do this graph just by looking at these numbers right here, or these, these points right here. Okay? So I'm just going to plot those points. I'm not really thinking too hard. I'm just going through the steps here. 2, 0 is right there. 3, 1 is right there. And 6, 4, 5, 6, up 2. And there we go. And if we connect the points, we get something like that. All right, let's put this all together now. Let's take a look at what's going on. First of all, notice that we have the same looking function as the basic function. It's a square root function still, but that it moved to the right 2. And if you remember things from our, our unit 1, when we have a minus 2 inside of the function, it's inside of here, then that is a right-left shift. And it's the opposite of what you'd normally think. Instead of being minus 2 being left, it's actually to the right. Why? Because that's how it works. See over here? That's just what happened. And so you learn those patterns, and you just keep doing the same thing every time. Now, you can also, by looking at this graph, you'll see the domain and range. As we, as we scan this graph from left to right, as there is no graph, there is no graph, there is no graph, there is graph. The graph starts right here, and then from that point on, it exists forever after 2. So from 2 to infinity, we have the domain. And then for range, we're starting, we're trying to scan up and down and see what's going on. And if we start down low here, there is no graph, there is no graph, there is no graph, but there's the graph right there, and then forever, it goes up after that. This is going to go keep going up and up and up and up, just kind of slowly. 
And so you could look at this picture and also figure out what the domain and range are. But you can also do it by looking at the values that are being created. Why? Because this is the same thing. This is just a picture. This right here is a picture of that. That's all graphs are. They're pictures of the points. All right, a little bit faster this time. Um, I've created a little messier situation. It's got, it still has a number inside the radical that's going to move the graph left to right. I also have a number outside the radical which is going to shift the graph down. And I put a number in the front which just changes how fast the graph is going up. And uh, so we could go fast on this and just kind of know those patterns. We could know this is going to the left three, down one, and a little faster than normal. Um, but to get a true accurate graph, I think we should still stick to at least some of this. I think, I think always plotting points on these will help you get an accurate graph and start to feel what the domain and range are. Because I did ask the number one question here is what's the domain and the range up there. Okay. So by forcing yourself to plug points in for x, it's going to make you realize what the domain is. In this case, once again, we can't let this be negative inside of here. This, the square root part can't be negative. And if we just think about it, negative 3 for x is kind of the bare minimum. That's going to create a 0 inside the radical, which is fine. But if we try to put a negative 4 in there, or negative 5, whatever, we'll start to get negatives inside the radical. So our lowest value here, oops, our lowest value we can plug in is negative 3. So the first thing you realize there is that just because this can't be negative doesn't mean that this can't be negative. This value can be negative. It's just the entire inside of the square root can't be negative. So negative 3 is a fine number to plug in there. And then from there, how about we go negative 2 because that will give us 1, and we know the square root of 1 is 1. And how about we go with a positive 1 because that will be 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. That will keep things nice and clean. So our domain, we can already see our domain for this problem is going to be negative 3 to infinity. Now let's put those values into the function and get the y values. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do one of them real slow for you and just show you. So f of negative 3 equals 2 times negative 3 plus 3 minus 1. I probably normally do this in my head, but I want you guys to see what's in my head. So we have 2 times square root of 0 minus 1. But that's just 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And that's what goes here. Let's try the next one mentally. So if I take negative 2 and put it in right here, I get negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So this whole thing now is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 minus 1 is 1. And one more time. And there's no magic to how many points I'm putting in here, but I think we need at least three when we're trying to graph a curvy uh, object. Um, you know, four or five would even be better, but you know, there's something called time also, so we want to save time sometimes. Uh, all right, so we got we're gonna put a one in here, right here. One plus three is four. Square root of four is two. Two times two is four. Four minus one is three. I think if you can do these in your head and make math a little more fun than having to write out this over and over again. I think we can handle that. If not, keep doing this. If you're struggling to do it mentally, then keep plugging the numbers in and work it out. Um, all right, so we now want to know what the range is. Remember, the original question really here is the domain and range. 
So range we get by looking at the y values. Remember the domain is all the x values that we're allowed to put into the function and the range is all the y values that come back out of the function. And If you look at the y values, our lowest y value is negative 1, but we can keep going up and up forever from there. So it's negative 1 to infinity. Quick graph, running out of space here, but uh, make a quick graph for you. It's not that big a deal. It's negative 3, negative 1, which is over here, negative 2, positive 1, and 1, 3, which is right here. Connect the points, make something like this. Now, could we have already sort of known that that, was like, that graph was going to look like? Absolutely. Remember, we know that it was going to go to the, the, the basic square root graph, which this pretty much looks like that, is shifted to the left 3 and down 1. It's down 1 right there. So that's left 3, down 1. That's the, now the new beginning of that graph. And all this 2 really does is it's hard to even notice necessarily but it looks like this maybe this is going up a little faster instead of being instead of being kind of lower like this it's just the two is speeding up the process a little bit it's making it go up a little steeper still kind of flat it's going to definitely flatten out in here but maybe a little different than what could have looked like this it's a subtle difference All right, one more. Um, one thing we haven't talked about yet is if we put a negative in the front. We talked about it with other graphs. We know that uh, if it was a, if our original graph was a V, we know that when we put a negative in the front, it's an upside down V. And same thing with parabolas. The negative in the front multiplied will, uh, we, we called it a reflection over the x-axis or flipped over. Okay. So that's what's going to happen here, but once again, as always, we don't have to just know exactly what it's going to look like. We can always just make a table, and you know we're back. To, the domain is simple again. It's just zero. We can't. We can put a zero or anything higher in there. I did not put any pluses or minuses inside of this one. I'm trying to keep it simple. So our lowest value we're allowed to plug in for x is zero. And I'm, let's put a 1 and a 4 in there. Remember, the square root of 4 is 2. So those are, right now, 4s are nice numbers to plug in there. And when we do that, we get the square root of 0, which is 0. 0 times anything is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. And 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And the square root of 4 is, I'm putting a 4 here, is 2. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Domain is 0 to infinity the range here oops the range definitely so if we look at these numbers here they're not going down. I mean, they're not going up. They're going down. So actually, in this case, we want to think about this, that the highest value we can get for the y is 0, and the lowest is negative infinity. We can keep going lower. The, the higher number I put here, since there's a negative here, it's going to keep being a bigger negative number, or in other words, a smaller number. So the range here is negative infinity. Remember, the left number is always the lowest it can be and then the highest it can be is zero and we can include zero so we put a square bracket because we do get zero for y right there but we can we'll never get another number we're never going to get a positive value for y out of this and then finally might as well uh might as well make a graph for it as well the graph i'm just going to plot those points the points are zero zero one negative three should be right here and 4 negative 6 it's 4 one, two, three, right here and so what's happening on this one something like this 
And you can see, just to wrap this all up, you can see that this is just the reflection of if, if that negative right there wasn't there, then this would have been in here like this. But since that negative was there, it reflected it down over the x-axis. And on top of that, this 3 here is making it even faster than normal. So, like if there was no number, if it was just a 1 there, or in other words, there was nothing written there, you know, it might look like this. If there was a 2 there, like the last problem we did, maybe it would be like in here like this. And a 3 is like this. Maybe a 4 would come in here like this. And a 5 like this, etc. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, basically, the lesson is just... You know, if I had to leave you with only one thing, do this. Do this. Pick x values that will create no negatives inside the square root. And then just do the arithmetic to get the y values. And then plot the points and make the graph. You'll discover all the things you probably know the patterns of. Even if you forgot, this will always get them for you. All right, good luck on the homework. Um, you know, you're welcome to keep revisiting this video. You can go back and forth and look at samples again. You can do it.